Today's show, we're going to talk about week four. Uh, we're going to recap week three, but go into the week four. Um, a lot of things to talk about today. Super excited for the show. I'm joined right next to me by at Brickwall Blitz in South Dakota by at Matasaurus Rex. Our top headlines for today. Celtics coach Ime Udoka is out for the 2022 season with load management. Brett Favre reportedly stole $70 million in welfare funds from Mississippi. I was going to put down more information, but... Brett Favre stole it. After falling to 0-3, Raiders coach Josh McDaniels had a closed-door meeting with owner Mark Davis. In the meeting, Davis claimed that McDaniels was stealing more money from poor people than Brett Favre. <laughs> hey, we're getting our Brett Favre ones out today. That's good. That also kind of works because Mark Davis is like the poorest owner in the league, too. L- little double entendre there. I'm glad is you caught really? that. Yeah. He is, yeah. Kyrie Irving said he gave up four years, $100 million to not take a shot. In contrast, O.J. Simpson gave up more to take a shot. <laughs> Panthers wideout DJ Moore has 88 yards through three games with his new quarterback. I haven't seen someone produce something this small since Baker Mayfield at the Cheesecake Factory. Oh my God. <laughs> Trevor Lawrence is finally starting to come into his own, which is great for representation of quiet, long haired stoner surf bros everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Uh, Doug Peterson has tied Urban Meyer for fifth all-time wins as Jacksonville Jaguars head coach. That's a crazy stat. What's even crazier is he just needs to finger one more college girl's butt to tie Urban's other franchise record. (laughs) Get it done, Doug. The Raiders are the NFL's only 0-3 team after a close loss to the Titans. When asked how he'd deal with the adversity, head coach Josh McDaniels left a resignation letter. All right, Lakers forward Anthony Davis stated that his goal for this season was to play all 82 games. Russell Westbrook's goal is to shoot 100% from the field. KD's goal is to cause no drama on the team. And Kyrie Irving's goal is to get vaccinated. Um, Yeah, so pretty good headlines. Uh, Let's talk about some games uh, from this past week. I can start with the, uh, the Browns and Steelers. Super happy that the Browns won. I didn't think they were gonna win. Previous week against the Jets, uh, a little PTSD came for me. I was at a uh, I was at a bar in Southeast Ohio, which if you got people that don't know, Southeast Ohio is right next to West Virginia, which is right next to uh, Pennsylvania. So a lot of Steelers fans down there, but also a lot of Browns fans. It's about 50-50. So it was just kind of crazy. Like half the bar was super excited, half the bar was pissed. Um, I thought the Browns were going to blow it again, and they didn't. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, I'm ready to say this. This isn't my hot take of the week, but I'm going to say this. Jacoby Brissett, best quarterback the Browns have had since 1999. If you look at the stats, though, isn't he like I think third in the league in like overall production right now, or at least the Browns' yeah, offense but that's like, or something that's like, like that? That's like pro football focus. Like I don't to like I like PFF when it benefits me. I don't like PFF when it doesn't benefit me. I'm just like fuck you if they're not good. But if it's for me, I'm I'm gonna promote it everywhere and not cite my sources. We'll say this about the Browns, uh, according to Football Outsiders, who are not PFF per source. They are the seventh best team via DVOA, which which measures snap by snap efficiency. So, how about them Browns? So they get the job done. Um, any any other games across the NFL? Uh, Monday night's game was interesting. Yeah, I, we might have had the two worst primetime games in a row. Can we stop putting? I mean, the Cowboys had a good game last night, but it was only because they faced the Giants. Can, can we please stop putting these teams? on national television like why does all the bad why do all the biggest cities have the bad teams like the bears are always on the giants are always on thankfully the jets are really never on but i don't know why the giants get any games yeah i'm not sure either it's just anytime the giants are on primetime tv i just kind of assume it's a night i'm gonna be catching up on some reading or something like that are you guys uh ready to buy into the cooper rush hype though three no in the nfl never lost Never lost. I'm ready. His stats like aren't that much different than Dax. I always, I still think Dak is better, obviously, but I love how Jerry Jones is perpetuating this by saying like, "Oh, like I would, I would welcome a quarterback controversy." He's like, "Of course you would, you dumb fuck. <laughs> you have no idea what you're doing." He did the exact same thing when Dak went on the run with Romo. He was kept saying like, "Oh yeah, like when Tony comes back, how great of a story would it be like if Dak got hurt and Tony Romo came in and won us the Super Bowl?" It's like. I mean, you're just not really advocating for the guy to get hurt right now. But he does the same thing with his uh, whenever he has a mistress. It's like, well, we'll have some sort of controversy in the household. You know, he brings in controversy all the time. Always, he always competition. He's always competing, especially with his, his mistress. Yeah. 
Uh, another game I want to talk about has nothing to do with the game is uh, the Jaguars and Chargers. Now, the Jar Jaguars typically have very low attendance. The Chargers might have the lowest attendance in the NFL. Uh, so I wanted to ask you guys the question of what do you think is more empty? A Jaguars-Chargers game or Tom Brady's home after a loss? Uh, you got to give it to Tom's home after a loss, especially if there's tablets around. You got to get you got to get out of there. I think Tom Brady's going to play till he's 60. I think if like he actually does end up getting divorced, I think that is a very real possibility. Bro, he's going to go from eight rings to seven. Any other games you want to talk about this week? Uh, yeah. What did you guys think of the 49ers-Broncos game? Because I could only stomach Ooh. watching the first half of that. I didn't even see the comeback at the end. It was so bad. Okay, so honestly, like that that game was so bad that like actually unironically thought it was good. It, like it was it was honestly like the B movie of games because like it, like it just kept getting worse. I was like, how can it just get worse? And it just did. It yeah. was amazing. I get that. It's like uh, it's like the room. Like it's a cult movie. It's so bad that it's good. It's like one of those super bad movies that are good. I I totally agree. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo. We've known about who he is for a very very long time. He is not a great quarterback. What is most surprising is that Russell Wilson is also not playing like a good quarterback right now. What no, is going on with all. him, Matt? What's going on? So I have a theory. I did some digging into the numbers today. Um, Russell famously, we were talking about this with Tom Brady a little earlier. He got divorced in 2014. So he got divorced in 2014. And before that happened, he had a QBR of 100.6. Since that divorce, he has a QBR of 100.1. So it's not a huge difference, but I'm glad the numbers back that up. I think it's deeper than that. I think I don't think he needs to get back with his old fia, his old uh, wife Ashton Meat or whatever her name was. Meat? I think <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 genuinely, I think it's, that's what it was according to my research. I think Ash, Ashton Meat. I think he's that been cursed. sounds like a porn name. <laughs> a little bit. I think he's been cursed by Future, the rapper. Ever since he got with Sierra, he hasn't been as good of a quarterback. And I think Future, in like his latest album or whatever, has cursed Russell Wilson in some way. So if we got to find some way to reverse that curse somehow, especially if you're a Broncos fan. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about that. So Russell Wilson is playing very bad. I think we should come up with some suggestions on how to fix Russell Wilson's poor play, make him play better. Johnny, want to go first? Yeah, I kind of had the same thing as, uh, as Matt, uh, but perhaps I explained it differently. Uh, have him divorce Sierra. Um, ever since he dated her, he's had zero Super Bowls and hasn't made it past the divisional round. So, got to cut ties to uh, get the prize. All right, so here's my suggestion. You guys notice that everything Russell Wilson is doing recently is positive? Like, everything he says is positive? It's obviously not working. So, I think he needs to be more negative. Uh, maybe some say some things that will ruffle some feathers, feathers, like John Elway wasn't even that good of a quarterback, or uh, IPAs are stupid, or if you smoke weed, you're going to hell. Um, give us some of that edge back. I mean, maybe stop saying to your teammates, let's rod and maybe tell the other team to ride this dick. I think if he starts being an asshole, I think the performance is going to go up. I, I could see that alienating some Denver fans, but I think it'd be hilarious if he just came out and just be like, yeah, hiking is stupid. I don't enjoy it at all. Hey, Baker Mayfield alienated half of the Browns fan base. And guess what? He's on the Panthers now. <laughs> Did it work? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I love that escalate. It went from John Elway sucks to ride this dick <laughs> well it's we a natural here. progression like week by week throughout the season like this week right. he just drops something super casually like you know what i've never been a big fan of biking to by the end of the year he's just trashing everyone going yeah. scorched earth on the world Cor Coors light sucks yeah i like that i like the idea of him completely just switching up his image going negative become the become the bad boy of the league basically mr limited <laughs> <laughs> You know what? You actually can't do everything that you put your mind to. You you are very limited by your genetic capabilities. Just give up and settle. Okay, so how about we do uh how about we do out of pocket tweet this week? Um Johnny, how about you go first? Okay, so this is a very old one. Um I think it might be from like 2014 cuz like uh cuz like the user cuz like the uh interface is kind of like older, but um it's from at Tiff Tiffany Alvord. Uh, stop saying I wish and start saying I will. And then one of the responses was at, from at High Resonance, I will my parents still loved me. <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be about sports. You just chose a random out-of-pocket tweet? Could be about Tom Brady's family. Jeez. Okay, so I have one. And it's a picture of Michael Irvin without glasses on NFL Network. 
and this guy Dallas in DC says, "Hey, Michael Irvin, playmaker, you ditched the glasses. I dig them. Just saying." Michael Irvin quote tweets response and says, "No, I left them at my hotel, bro. I can't see anything." <laughs> He, d- he did rock the just like Milton from The Simpsons look. His eyes yeah. are beady. Yeah, bro. Michael Irvin's like one of the more underrated like sources of memes, in my opinion. I agree. He's, he's had some good ones over the years. He doesn't get the credit he maybe deserves. He he looks in this photo. It's so funny. He he looks like he threw up and he like went to his mom and is just like, I need help. He looks like his CTE is acting up. Jeez. <laughs> All right. The only one I have, it wasn't really a tweet, but I saw it on Twitter. It was from last night's commentary. Joe Buck was talking about an Indi- a former Indiana Hoosier player who made a good catch. He said, with that catch, he makes the Indiana Hoosiers football program proud. And Troy Aikman said, that doesn't take much. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But the good thing is Troy immediately backed up. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have said that. That was a low blow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our mom went to uh, Indiana. All right. I got a hot take. The Miami Dolphins are going to go to the Super Bowl. Already, I think they're the best. I'm not even going to say they're going to win the AFC East. I think they're going to go to the Super Bowl after this week. I mean, they beat the Bills, but they have two top 10, maybe even two top five wide receivers in the NFL. The defense, legit. Two is proven to be a good quarterback. He doesn't have to be great, but he's good. Uh, Mike McDaniels is the Mr. Crocker of the NFL. McDaniel. McDaniel. All right, my bad. His fairy godparent looking ass is leading the Dolphins to a 3 0 star for the first time, probably in a long time. And I'm not even really talking about the defense yet, but I won't even mention them because their defense is good, but I'm not talking about the players. I'm talking about the city of Miami. Anytime you go to play in Miami, you're probably going to drink. Those guys are definitely going to a strip club, and if you're not going to the strip club, you're definitely taking it to go. There's no good luck. I mean, if you're going to Miami or Vegas and you're playing good luck because I feel like that's home field advantage completely. Uh, So I I like the Dolphins. I like the Dolphins. I think they're a very good team. I don't don't know if they're – like as good as Buffalo, because uh, you know the Josh Allen factor. But like, they did beat them. But like, they're also like that. Like that's their secondary was also like injured. Like the hell. Yeah. Yeah, I really I do like Mike McDaniel a lot too. I saw I was watching some interviews of his yesterday, and he seems kind of like Phil Jackson esque, where he was talking a lot about just like getting the most out of the players, like with confidence and stuff like that, and. In such like an alpha male sport like football, you don't hear stuff like that too much. So I think it's really refreshing. I like them a lot. I don't know if they're a Super Bowl team yet. They would be. They would be a fun Super Bowl team. All right, what's your hot take? Okay, so my super hot take is that the Cowboys are still making the playoffs. Let me explain why. Okay, the offense, uh, the the defense has shown that it's good enough to carry the team while Dak is gone. I like. I don't know why. Like my note said, Dad, so it auto corrected too. Anyway, Dad uh, th- uh, yeah, they have one of the best pass rushes in the league. Micah Parsons is, is like the the front runner for defensive player of the year right now. Um, if you saw like a staff from ESPN, they they pressured Daniel Jones like I think like twenty two times more than any other team in the last two years of any game. Uh, also, Michael Gallup is not back, and even though that offensive line has gone to shit, it's uh, I mean it's still not even like near the worst in terms of like pressures given up. So and like and also our boy Cooper Rush, who is him for the moment. Bro, they played the New York Giants. Let's not get carried away here, guys. It's the New York Giants. Bro, I had, the Giants and Bengals were favored to win both games, and that Cowboys defense carried them in both games. Matt, do you have a hot take? Um, real quick on the Cowboys thing. I could see just because of how bad the NFC is. I mean, there's no way they're winning the NFC East with the Eagles in there, but with how bad the NFC is, I mean, who else would the wild card teams be right now? Arizona's not great. San Fran's got some question marks. So I I don't disagree with it. It would we'll have to see how they play against like the actual good teams because I don't think they've played like any great teams yet. Um my super hot take. Last week, I said the Giants were the worst run franchise in the league. I'm changing that this week. I think the Chargers are the worst run franchise in the league. They, wow. yes, yes. They, don't, they don't have any adults in the building. They have their quarterback out there with broken ribs playing when they're down 28 points in like the fourth quarter. They just lost their left tackle for the year. Their best receiver is hurt. Joey Bosa is hurt. I, I don't know who in that team is like a leader that is like knows what they're doing because clearly they have yeah. a terrible injury 
staff or like training staff. They stabbed a guy in the lungs a few years ago. Yeah, I was going to say, Ty- Tyrod <laughs> Taylor is still suing the team doctor. But, yeah, literally ruined I just, his career. <laughs> I just don't know where the vision of that team is. I don't think they make the playoffs this year. Um, I think uh, their best. I think their best hope. Take. That's a cold take. I mean, with all these injuries, the know. left tackle that they, the left tackle they brought in last last week after their main guy went down, he did not look good at all. And I don't think a rib injury is something you just kind of heal from overnight. I think their best hope is they talk Sean Payton out of retirement this off season. All right, let's dive into some games for week four. First is the uh, Thursday night game between the 3-0 Miami Dolphins and the not 3-0 Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are favored by minus four at home. I don't, I don't know, man. It's that hellacious Cincinnati home field advantage. I think betters don't think the Dolphins are that good. I, I think if this is a prove-it game for the Dolphins against the uh, Super Bowl finalists from the AFC, um, I'm going to, I don't want to preemptively say this is my upset of the week because we got more games to talk about, but I will say the Dolphins will upset the Bengals. I just am not sold on, I'm not sold on Cincinnati. They are in Kentucky. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't really see how this is an upset. Like they're one of the two undefeated teams and also they've been playing like really well. Like, like, like they didn't necessarily like stop Josh Allen, but they contained him. Like they kept him like out of the end zone. They only had like 17 points the entire game. So yeah, I'm. I'm also going to pick the Dolphins to win this one. Like, I don't. I. I. I really don't understand like why Cincinnati's favorite. Like, they beat the Jets. This is an error, Matt. This is like an error. I'm so confused. I actually don't know either. I'm guessing they're just kind of taking the experience over like the new coming team. Is this also going to be an all-time uniform matchup? The Bengals are wearing their all whites with like the white helmets, so those will be dope. And then the Dolphins jerseys are always just phenomenal, especially those teal ones. Yeah. So yeah. I'm take I'm taking the Dolphins as well, just because I think they're a better team. I'm also con- a little confused by this line. I might have to find a way to get in on it because it just doesn't seem right. Yeah, guys. Let me Unless take there's a something that we're quick. missing. Put, put this right now. <laughs> Empty my bank account. <laughs> Seriously. All right. Next game, we got the Bills and Ravens. The Ravens are not favored. The Bills are favored by minus three and a half on the road. This all right, this is first off a crime. The fact this is not on Sunday Night Football. It's an absolute crime. Um, I like the Ravens in this game. I like them at home. I think the Bills are – this is going to be such a competitive game. Obviously, the Bills just lost to the Dolphins. They're going to come off with some steam. But no one's really been able to stop uh, Lamar Jackson. I mean, the Dolphins won, but it wasn't because they stopped Lamar Jackson. It's because the Ravens couldn't stop the Dolphins, which is funny because this is the Dolphins bowl right now. Two teams that have lost to the Miami Dolphins. I like the Ravens. Lamar Jackson is coming for a, a really solid MVP season. He's going to get – he should be the highest paid player in the NFL right now and in NFL history. I think the Ravens win this one at home. Yeah, these are like the two – like the top two MVP candidates right now, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen. I, like, I think it's going to be like a marathon, potentially like a, potentially like a top three game of the year, which is crazy because like we've already had like a, a lot of candidates for game of the year considering how wild it is. But – um. Concerning, concerning the injuries to the Bills' defense and uh, the fact that the Ravens are, as I've said numerous times, healthy this time around, I think the Ravens are going to barely edge out the Bills. It should be an absolutely amazing game, and I also would not be surprised if the Bills won, but picking Baltimore. Yeah, the over-under, Matt, is 51.5. Do you like that over or under? I think I would take the under. It feels like the Ravens kind of control the clock a little more. Plus, I'm, I'm also taking the Ravens in this game. I think Lamar Jackson's MVP as of right now. And it kind of, it's funny. I think the Bills might be a little too Josh Allen dependent. Like they can't really do anything outside of just letting him air it out 30, 40, 50 times or whatever. And I think that's going to come, it's already starting to bite them in the ass a little bit. So I like the Ravens in this one as well. I think it's a lower scoring game, but I think it's going to be a lot of like long drives that end up in touchdowns, not a lot of quick scores, but yeah, give me the Ravens. Oh man. I'm so terrified. Like, as a Browns fan, the Ravens are very, very good. It's going to be yeah. a tough one. And I mean, I don't think the Browns are going to win the division here. I think it's the Ravens for the taking. But even for the next few years, you know, the Browns have put all this into Sean Watson and their team right now. They're in win-now mode. The Ravens aren't going to slow down. This is just typical Browns fashion. Like, they put all this in, and 
They face a John Elwire. They face a Lamar Jackson. They can't get to the big game. You sound- hey, just keep cheering for contract problems with Lamar. Maybe he leaves. Yeah, you sound confident that he's going to stay. Yeah, he's going to stay. Why would he not stay? They're going to pay him. They have to pay him. They have to pay him. He's making a good case for it right now. They're stupid oh, yeah. that they haven't paid him yet. I don't, I don't know. Just, but he's showing them why. He's the only reason why your fantasy team is any good. Johnny's first place in our fantasy league. Lamar Jackson is averaging 50 points a game. Yeah. Yeah, I've got him hey, in Joey, mind too. Hey, Joey, uh, no one cares about fantasy. That's true. <laughs> your also, team. last last thing on that, the Ravens just have terrible luck with getting quarterbacks on contract years because Joe Flacco did this exact same thing. It was his contract year and he won the Super Bowl. Yeah, they have a tough so time. So you think with by the, now that <laughs> they have a tough time with elite quarterbacks. Clearly. Like Joe Flacco and Trent Dilfer. Um <laughs> Browns at the Falcons. Browns are favored by minus one and a half. Um, I like the Browns win by way more than one and a half. I think they have the formula right now. Jacoby Brissett doesn't have to do anything crazy. He's found some chemistry with Amari Cooper. They're like Kobe and Shaq, but just like a much diluted form of Kobe and Shaq. Um, so really not Kobe and Shaq at all. But the chemistry is great. They found the one-two punch again with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. The offensive line... Pretty good. Defense doesn't need to be great. They're going to be close games. It's going to be a lot of running. It's going to be a lot of wasting the clock. Because Brown's going to have a lot of time of possession the way they're going to win games. I like them to win. I'm going to say like 24 to 17. So uh, an interesting thing about the Browns and Falcons is that the Browns historically own the Falcons. Like, not only are the Browns 12-3 and against the Falcons all time, but since the return in 1999 – they're four and one against the Falcons. They have only lost once, and that was in 2010. Outside of that, uh, they have completely dominated wow. the Falcons. So, yeah, take a guess as, as to who I'm picking to win this one. Browns. I think you say Falcons. I was ready for you to just, just I, say Falcons. I did Fal- not know the Browns, Browns owned anybody. <laughs> yeah. So good for them. I think the Browns actually are probably the most underrated team in the league right now. They should be undefeated by all accounts. Mm-hmm. It should be undefeated, and I think that continues this week. I think they beat the Falcons pretty handily. They've got a good formula right now. I think they know who they are as, like, an identity. So, yeah, I like the Browns. Yeah, I think that's important, too, like you just said, to have an identity. Um, and I think the Browns have that. I think a lot of teams are kind of figuring that out. The nice thing about having Jacoby Brissett is he's not going to necessarily win you games, but he's not going to turn over the ball. He's very accurate. He makes good decisions. And I think he's more on the conservative side, but that's totally fine because when you have Nick Chubb, when you have Kareem Hunt, you're you're able to do that. So, all right, let's go into the next game. We got Jaguars at Eagles. This is the Doug Peterson Bowl. The Eagles are favored by minus six and a half. Ooh. The Eagles also are the other the other three and team in the NFL. The Jaguars are two and one. After this this past week, I think a lot of people have been surprised. They really, you know are believing in the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I am definitely one of those believers. Believers. I think the Jaguars are... I think the Jaguars are going to win this game. I'm going to call this my upset of the week. I'm saying the Jaguars beat the Eagles, get them off their high horse, stop looking at the Liberty Bell, and face the reality. I don't know why they would look at the Liberty Bell. I was trying to think of some cool analogy. I think the Jaguars win. I mean, there's probably a reason for the uh, Liberty Bell having a crack. Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to pick the Eagles to win this one. Um, I do think the Jaguars are a lot better than any of us could have ever imagined, but I also think the Eagles are the more complete team, have the better offensive line, have, have the better receiving corps, uh, potentially even uh, the better defense. So, uh, And Jalen Hurts has also been like seeing the middle of the field. He's been spreading the ball around to his receivers, um, and I think that continues. So I'm going to pick the Eagles to win this one, but it should be a good game. Yeah, I went back and forth with this one a lot as well. I had the Jaguars written down initially, but the more I think about it, the more I think I'm going to go with the Eagles. I think they're better at all aspects. I think it's a really good game. I think Doug Peterson, people forget Doug Peterson actually coached Jalen Hurts that first year, and he drafted Jalen Hurts, which feels like a lifetime ago. But uh, I don't think they're able to completely stop him. I think the Jaguars are getting better, but they're not there quite yet. So give me the Eagles in a close one. You gotta, you li- listen, it's so fun to bet on the Jaguars because nobody expects them to win. And sometimes, some, I'm not saying they win, but sometimes they do. And sometimes is, they do. <laughs> is it more fun to bet on somebody that isn't supposed to win than somebody you think is supposed to win? It is. This is also the first time I'm picking against the Jaguars. I pick them to win in each of the first three weeks. Interesting. All right. 
All right, next game we got is a pretty good one. Uh, Chiefs at Buccaneers. The Chiefs are favored on the road, minus two. Until Patrick Mahomes beats Tom Brady, which he has not yet at this point, I believe. Uh, 2020, get fucked. When? Regular season. All right, well, we're talking about postseason here. Even though this is a regular season game, fuck. I think the Buccaneers are going to win this one at home. I like the Chiefs, but I think I like the Buccaneers a little more. I think Tom Brady is going to have a, uh, a prove-it game. They haven't been great this year. They just, I mean, they're 2-1. and one. They lost this past week. They're not great. They've done enough. I think it's going to be a team performance game. I like them to win. Yeah, you, you, you actually might have convinced me there. I think the Buccaneers won this one. Um, the Chiefs, Chiefs game last year, like, it was kind of like a flu- – like, sorry, last week, not last year. Uh, it was kind of like a fluke loss to the Colts. They should have won that game. But uh, that special team has been terrible for them all season. They, like, they just cut their second string kicker. And uh, I can't imagine it's going to get any better considering, like, the kicker that – like, the kicker that's above them is uh, injured right now. And, uh, and, like, people have, been, like, unironically been saying, like, why isn't safety Justin Reed kicking? So that's been a problem for them. Drops have been a problem for them. And uh, I think the like Buccaneers have the best defense in the league right now by like points allowed and uh, in efficiency. So I think they control the Chiefs in this one. Yeah, I like the Bucks as well. I don't know what the over under is off the top of my head, but take the under because right now it looks like they might 45. not be able to play the game. And yeah, under, right now it under. looks like they might not be able to play the game in Tampa. They might have to move it because of the hurricane. Oh, so I think that. Oh my god, of, I forgot about that. Yeah, they're in Miami right now. They moved to yeah. Miami. Yeah. 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 So it looks like they might not be able to play there. So take the under regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the Bucks too. I just think they have a stronger identity. I think the Chiefs are still kind of trying to figure out who they are in the post Tyree Kill world. We know who Juju Smith ha- Schuster is, though. We do know that. We do know. Um, but yeah, give me the Bucks in a close game. I don't think it'll be a necessarily exciting game either. I think it'll be a lot of running the ball and punting. We love our punts here as a, a we Browns do. family. Speaking of families, we got the Ramley against the 49ers. At San Francisco, the 49ers are favored by minus two. I don't know if I like this one. Now, Jimmy Garoppolo is very good at home. Is Jimmy Garoppolo historically good against the four, uh, the Rams? Uh, the Rams have won. I, th- I think the Rams have only, like, lot, lot. No, I, I actually, wait. Sorry, I'm getting, like, a reverse. Yeah, I think, I think the 49ers are. Okay. <laughs> Shan- Shanahan CT, typically no. Shanahan typically owns McVay. Yeah, there we go. There it was go. up until he got it was up until he got Stafford that he he hadn't beaten Shanahan until he got Stafford, oh, if okay. I remember correctly. Johnny made a lot of good points there. Um, I just am not sold on the 49ers. I was not sold on them when they had Trey Lance. I just don't think, and especially with the Garoppolo. I mean, it is frustrating to watch him play. I think 49ers fans have convinced themselves that they like him because we all remember, we all know he is handsome. Mm-hmm. I know that the Rams just aren't, you know, the team that – I mean, they weren't a great team all last year, and then they made, like, kind of a run and then obviously won the Super Bowl. I just – I don't know. I think they have a little bit of a Super Bowl hangover, but I think they're going to pull it out against the 49ers. I think they're going to win by a field goal. I don't know. I, this, I'm not going to look – there's a lot of bad games this week. I think this is one of them. I don't think this is a good game. Yeah. I think we were due for a couple stinkers. There's not a lot of great ones this week. There's a lot of bad games. I actually think the 49ers are going to win this one. I see this as more of like mm. a bounce back game. I am actually not really that sold on the Rams. Like Joey's not sold on the 49ers. I'm not sold on the Rams. That game against the Cardinals, it like it like it like I did not think that was a very convincing win for them at all. Like they were they looked like they were like running on fumes. They like they they nearly blew a 20 to 3 lead to the Falcons. They got blown the fuck out by the Bills. And uh, I don't know. I just, and oh yeah, also the Cardinals game. We're like, like they like they just barely pulled away at the very end um, against a team that should be zero and three, but somehow aren't isn't because Kyler Murray's a gamer. Um, I think the Four Niners gonna win this one. I think Jimmy Garoppolo like does have kind of an excuse. I mean, he sucks, but uh, he also has not really been in the offense for a while because it was supposed to be Trey Lance's. But uh, yeah, I think the Four Niners bounce back and win this one. Yeah, I like the Niners too. Shanahan usually owns McVay, and I agree, I agree with you, Johnny. I was watching the Rams Cardinals game, and the Rams just don't look inspired. Like they don't have any swag to them at all right now. They just seem kind of vanilla. It just kind of feels like they're doing whatever it takes to win, which is just like find Cooper Cup or just like run the ball. Like they just don't have any. No. I don't know. Nothing really excites me about the Rams right now, which is crazy because they have like five superstar players. They have so much so, talent. I, yeah. Yeah. 
I like the Niners to win this one. It's at home. Shanahan usually does well. And I, I just, yeah, I just don't, I'm not feeling inspired by the Rams right now. We should keep these in, in track because we, I could just say anything and nothing's holding me accountable unless we figure out how we did for the week. So maybe we could figure out how to. That is true. How to track this. I miss Jared. Jared would always track this. <laughs> uh, before we go into our upsets and locks, I do want to talk about one game, only because the spread is hilarious. Uh, speaking of the Cardinals, the Cardinals are on, on the road in Carolina. Carolina is favored by two and a half points. The Panthers own the Cardinals. Like, 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 like each of the last three seasons, they've beaten them. Cliff Kingsbury hasn't beaten a Matt Rule team since 2017. That's, that, that's also Oof. wild. Because they played each other that in college. That is damning. Yeah, I don't That's know. That's bad. So I'm going to pick the Panthers in this one. So if the Cardinals lose, they're one and three, correct? Yes. That's a bad look, dude, if they lose to the Panthers. Here's the thing. Matt Rule is probably going to get fired after this season. If the Cardinals lose to the Panthers, that's just going to open up the floodgates. Then Kyler Murray's preparing for Modern Warfare 2. It's – I'm – I don't yeah, know. the beta came out, didn't it? Yeah, didn't the beta That's come out this week. Focused on this past weekend. I don't know. It, I think the Panthers are gonna win this game. It is on the road though. The Cardinals have lost each of their last seven home games. They're like they're probably the worst home. Seven team. road games. Home games. Seven home games. Seven straight home games. This they've is, this, lost seven straight home games. Yes. The they, Cardinals. Yep. yep. They, like they like they they have maybe like the worst home field advantage ever. So they just good on the road. Yeah. Or Kyler doesn't bring his Xbox out on the road. <laughs> oh yeah. shit! This is on the road. Uh, no, he definitely I, brings yeah. it. Yeah, I was gonna say Panthers one, but considering like the Cole Cardinals like road thing, I might pick the Cardinals. Also, Baker has not beaten Kyler Murray in the NFL either. He beat him in Oklahoma. I said NFL. He beat him in Oklahoma. They they, they play on the same team in Oklahoma. The joke was he beat him in the depth chart. <laughs> I don't care. Fucking idiot. Fuck you. He beat him in those QB throwing competitions where they throw into a garbage can. He had a bigger chip on. <laughs> he had a bigger chip on his shoulder. Matt, who do you like, Panthers or Cardinals in this game? Uh, honestly, probably the Cardinals. Isn't Baker like dead last in the league at QBR right now? Yeah. 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 The, Pan the Panthers are bad. <laughs> I'd DJ say Moore's the Cardinals not even on find pace a way. With 500 yards. Yeah. Yeah, it's ugly. Christian McCaffrey's done nothing. Yeah, give me the Cardinals. All right, Matt, let's go back to you. What is your upset of the week? Um, I'm going to take the Raiders over the Broncos. The Raiders are at home. Wow. The Broncos are discombobulated. I mean, if the, if the Raiders want any chance of being a part of this division race, they have to win this game at this point. Uh, McDaniels got lit, on, got lit up in a closed-door meeting. So, yeah, give me the Raiders wait, against wait, the Broncos. Wait, what about this closed-door meeting? You didn't hear about this? No. Oh yeah, the after the game, Josh McDaniels got called into a closed door meeting with the owner Mark Davis for like an hour or two. Apparently, it did not go very well. So I think McDaniels has lost like his last ten games as a head coach now, or something like that. So well, they made the, the Broncos. They made the, they, yes, they made the playoffs though, right? Yeah, McDaniels wasn't the coach last year. They had uh, Rich Bisakia or whatever his name was. Special teams coordinator with the Packers. Oh yeah. shit, that's right. He wasn't the coach last year. What do you go? Wait, so, nope, he was still season. in New England. Yes. It is. And, he, and three he, games and he got called into a meeting. Oh my god. Yeah, so I, whatever whatever they got in him, you gotta imagine. Some people are not good head coaches. I mean he was like a head coach for the Broncos too, and he didn't do very well there. I, no. Yeah, some people just can't coach, but are very good coordinators. I think Josh McDaniels is one of those people. I don't know. And yeah, that's the I'm, I mean, I'm sure it's rare coach. to be a good like Hugh Jackson was like Regarded as like a really good offensive coordinator, mm -hmm. and then he went one and fifteen and zero and sixteen, and now is the head coach of Grambling State. Like, what a fall off! That's pretty nice. <laughs> cameo legend though. Yeah, that's cameo legend though. Yes, he is a cameo legend. Um, Johnny, do you have an upset? Uh, I'm gonna pick the Jets over the Steelers. Steelers are favored by three and a half. Have you seen that offense? It's really talented. Uh, we did recently. Yeah, we actually did see it recently. Really talented, but uh, Trubisky is Trubisky is just. Awful. The play calling from Matt Canada is also awful. I don't know. I feel like the Jets could take it, especially since Joe Flacco is kind of like an elite dragon. Um, also, my mic was pointing away for some reason. So yeah, yeah, you weren't. Yeah, you weren't talking in the microphone. You can talk in the microphone if you'd like. Do you want to go ahead and do that? No, no, you can just keep. You keep going. Yeah, I'm gonna pick the Jets to upset the Steelers. Okay. Um, Matt. 
What? Uh, did, did, no, no Matt, Matt went first. I, I know. I'm going to go. I know. Sorry. Fuck that. Jesus. Uh, uh, fuck it. Let's have some fun. I'm going to pick the Patriots to upset the Packers <laughs> in Green Bay. It's one of those things where I'm like, yeah, Mac Jones is out. I don't even know who the quarterback is. Is it going to be Brian Hoyer? Yeah, it's Brian Hoyer. Yep. Fuck it. Let's do a Brian Hoyer upside game against the Packers. That'd be so funny. Wouldn't that be funny? It's just the Packers, like, turmoil just happened because of – it's not going to happen, but, like, what if it did? I'm going to pick them as my upside of the week. Now let's go with our locks of the week. Matt, do you have a – what's your lock? Uh, yeah, so I have the Packers over the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> I just I genuinely do not see a world in which the Patriots can unless Aaron Rodgers like disappears off the face of the earth. I do not see a world in which the Patriots can beat the Packers. So I enjoy you for putting it out there and going for it. But I just genuinely do not see a way it happens. Yeah, it was a good timing. Quite the transition. Johnny, who's your lock of the week? Uh, it's also Packers over the Patriots. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Also, I want I kind of want to change my upset because uh, I, I, I see that the Chargers are favored by five over the Texans, and it's at Houston. I think that's – I don't agree it's with a that. a lot of I, points. I, 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 I think I want to pick Houston to win that one. They're 0-2-1, and correct? You think that's going to be their first win? Justin Herbert is injured. The entire Chargers team is injured. Is Herbert playing this week? He is, but he's at like 40%. Okay, if you're the Texans 40%. didn't play that bad against also, the Bears. the Texans yeah. beat them last year as well. What were you saying, Matt? The, te- they, the Texans didn't play that bad against the Bears either. I, I don't hate that. I think the Chargers will still win. I think five points is way too much. So, But I'd still take the Chargers. But, yeah, I think it's a closer game than it looks, especially if they do end up rolling Herbert out there again. Okay. Um, One that we didn't talk about for my lock of the week is uh, Vikings at Saints. The Vikings are favored by minus three. These teams fucking hate each other. I think the Vikings hate the Saints more than the Saints hate the Vikings. I like a little bit of a revenge game here. It's not on prime time. It's in London. It's in London. Is that considered prime time because it's like... 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, but like prime time in London? It must be, yeah. It depends on how bright the lights are. If they're not that bright, Kirk Cousins' stigmatism isn't going to go off. So I person I th- I think that's a lock. That that was the most non-confident lock I think in this show's history, um, because that's not that's not what a lock is. It's it's usually with confidence. Having said that, I do think the Vikings are going to win on the road across the pond in London. Yeah, I agree. I I don't think the Saints are very good this year. Their offense is no, they very uninspired. The they lost the Panthers. They've lost. They've also lost every ounce of confidence I had in them. I had them as a playoff team entering the year. They had a nice yep, comeback same. against the Falcons, but that's the Falcons. <laughs> they're like designated to choke leagues. Like that's their job. Their job. Yeah. They, they were down twenty six to ten and came back, but that's like their job. So uh anything else before we uh wrap this show up? I did want to mention uh I saw this Florida man uh article I thought was pretty funny. A Florida man charged with DUI for operating a motorized scooter inside Walmart while being inebriated. So we got a DUI inside of Walmart. That might be the first indoor DUI ever. It's pretty sick, honestly. Yeah, yeah can set you a record. drive like, can you, like indoors? Can you just do anything? How the fuck does that work? It's like, well, he was indoors. <laughs> clearly not. I mean, clearly got a DUI. Yeah. I don't know. Thought that was I wonder how many DUIs on like those bird electric scooters there have been. I was on one this weekend, but I was sober. I did want to mention that. There you go. Yeah, being smart. I, well, I think I think we could probably wrap it up. Um, guys, everybody remember to bet on what was the game we said to bet on? Bengals no, Dolphins. Yeah, it was Bengals Dolphins. Everybody, make sure to put the house in the Dolphins being the Bengals in Cincinnati because um, that spread is ridiculous. All right, so this has been the Suryat Show, week three. Uh, we'll get better next week. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to us everywhere at Suryat Show. I'm Suryat, joined by Brickwall Blitz and Mattisaurus Rex. We'll see you next time, shipheads. Peace. <laughs>